Uh, I'm J.D. Miller, Chairman of the Board. Linda Hayes, Director of the Senior Center. Elaine Shambari, recently um, liaison for the FOSS for Friends of Sisters. Joan Powell, liaison for Southport LD Services. Janice LeBlanc, board member. Janice Desmond, board member. Gordon Price, chairman of Vice. What? What did I say? What? Chairman of Vice. Vice chairman. <laughs> the Vice Squad. You're the Vice Squad? Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> What kind of vice? Uh, yeah. We'll talk about that when the camera's off. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. Very good. Um, well, welcome. And, and Joe. Did we, yeah. did we Joe say? Joe Johnston. Yes, very <laughs> good. Nice we well, appreciate you being here. Okay. Um, we always enjoy having some live feedback from mm -hmm. the, yeah, the people that are living it. Living it. Like living you. the dream. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, want we review, I think we, we pass around minutes, does everyone have? Want well, we review? No. Yeah. Oh, we don't have minutes. No, yeah. Oh, there's more packets here, yeah. you just have to grab it, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. So sorry. didn't deliver. Two. Well, there's two different packets. Yep. Okay. There's Only because two. I there's forgot that we didn't two. have the minutes. Um, no one in the lane, there's, there's so Janice one had not been with us last month. So um, I did get the minutes typed this afternoon. I won't say how. But uh, I did realize I did not put a title on it, so you could title them minutes for May 10th. And then Joe will take care of posting them properly at the um, online. But they are, you know, well, it's still four pages, so they're not that. Uh, <laughs> you have to do not that summarized. That down and dirty, I guess I wasn't saying a lot. But. I make a motion to accept the minutes. Very good. Well done. Well done. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to you now. And, and everyone can note that it's all been printed out on a new letterhead. Everybody can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there it is. The logo at the top, the tagline at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Simple and 
we're trying to figure out how to place it on the newsletter this week, which is just going to print. So well, I think it's, a, it's enough. And I'm very happy and want to thank you all for helping to sort of guide us to, um, to I think, what was just right. Um, let's start with the Senior Center Site Planning, of which there really isn't a lot to report. Um, but I did check with uh, the town administrator who told me he had met with the OPM, with Vertex, as well as um, Joel Bargman, to clarify what was going to be looked at for options on the project. So I was not there, and this is coming to me. Okay. Um, and based on that, the architect is revising his proposal to, to better reflect um, the work expected to be performed. I can only assume um, at this point, and I did include in the report in that paragraph, you'll see where it says um, BOS motion, so right in the middle of the paragraph, BOS motion. Mm -hmm. So when um, sort of Jim's proposal was accepted as far as, you know, uh, demolishing the portion of gates having been discussed and replacing that with the senior center. Um, you know, I, I wasn't there and I hadn't heard that. And then there was a committee meeting with the Public Building Commission. That, you know, it was sort of, it was just a lot of talk about the gymnasium and the connection. And, and I I felt, wow, why, why do we keep going there? I, I need to understand better. I thought we were sort of the primary focus and it just kept <laughs> going there. And they said, well, that's our charge. And so then they provided me with this language and, you know, it does sort of clarify that it is as much, they are, the architects are being asked as much to look at um, the options for how to use the portion of the Gates building that would remain if it's feasible and the updates to the gymnasium that are necessary um, and the senior center. So I'm only assuming okay. that maybe there was just, you know, how much is which, mm -hmm. how much is going where, um, and in terms of what's available to support the project monetarily, you know, they must have to understand that. So, so that means when it goes for a vote for funding, <coughs> that will be... Well, I don't know that for a fact, actually, and that question has come up. So I do feel that the scope is as far as the design goes, because certainly we need them to look at really placement, not just a building, and we know exactly where it's going to sit and how it's going to face and you know where the parking lot's going. And they really have to look at placement and then it all it all goes from there. So I just included that so you would have the same information I have now and didn't have before. So um, so our next meeting well so we J D and I were not um, needed for the May 29th meeting of the Public Building Commission because at that time there was no discussion necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. So the next meeting is June 26th and you know Jim had simply said that expect that the expectation is that agreement is is pending is soon forthcoming. So I assume we'll have it and that will be on the agenda for okay. June. <coughs> uh, senior Center logo thank you very much. Thank you to Jane Norton and I I had to go to the Board of Selectmen meeting for the logo. I didn't just have to get the TA's approval. I had to go to the Board of Selectmen for the approval, um, which they gave, and they, they were happy with it, and they did like the nautical nature, and they liked the simplicity, I think, and the idea, as we talked about at the last meeting, that it probably could evolve if it had to, to you know better reflect as we do move into the building phase. Um, anything else we might want to add or... Uh, so transportation, I don't know if she's given her notice up by the last meeting, but Jean Sullivan has left uh, employee as transportation coordinator. So nice thing, now she gave us a month's notice, but again, things still take time and took a little time to think about, okay, well, maybe what do we want to put forth in terms of um, a job description, maybe altering it a little bit, and then come to find out we really can't because it is in the union, so it's um, one of the union positions and you can't just alter the language for the job. So it is what it is. Um, and so it's been posted now for a couple of weeks and we have three applicants so far. Um, well, I think three. I'm One we know. I'm just curious, what union? The administrative union. Okay. Tosca is, is 
okay. it's called. It's Joe's Union. Okay. The other union for directors management is called AMP. Oh, okay. Is a part-time position when you're... It's a full-time full position. Time. The transportation is full-time. And again, because it's in the union, you, you can't change that. Back mm -hmm. when Q was there, she would have liked to have gone part-time. Maybe we could have adjusted mm -hmm. it and given some of the responsibilities to someone else. But um, mm -hmm. it is, it is full -time. 35 hours because they're not cake for lunch. So it's mm -hmm. a 40-hour week for 35 hours. Um, so... So that job's been posted, and also, as you might remember, with the next fiscal year budget beginning July 1st, we were given 10 more hours for outreach. So um, it's still a little bit pending uh, as to whether those 10 hours will go to Jenny, who's currently 25 hours and could become full-time with those 10 hours, um, if she wants, or we could use the 10 hours differently if, we, if she didn't want it, if than if we chose. So we're still in some talks about doing that. But they gave us those hours. They, you know, um, at the time, Al Banger was the acting town administrator and Nancy Holt. But uh, because Laura is really working in the health department full time, Laura Lanier, mm -hmm. as a social worker and not with the Council on Aging, although she's available as to everyone, to the town and to us, and she has her clients um, with us. But still, so that's where we got those 10 hours designated. Uh, Situ Cable TV, uh, we had two sessions in May. On the 7th, we interviewed um, Gabrielle Svenning, Mimi Svenning's daughter. You might know Mimi. From the Situ Education Foundation. Right. And that's what she talked about, and she was really yep. great, and it was just really to present to the community, this is another community group, organization doing good work. They're new. They have... It has been a benefit to us. Um, so she was lovely. It was a nice interview. Mm -hmm. I think good information for the community to know about and the senior community to know about. And then on May 24th, following the Council on Aging Board training that Emma Schmarzo was doing in Norwell, which most or many of you have attended in the past, he came with us and, um, and did an interview. So I don't know if anyone's seen it. I asked a group of women today. No, nobody has. So it's been on for a couple of weeks, I think. We did it on May 24th. Emma. Emma. Hmm. Anyway, he's always a pleasure, I think, to listen to. I could listen to him all day. And he um, can talk all day. <laughs> 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 if given the right prompts. Yep. So um, he's a I, wealth of information. I know, and I think it was worthwhile. And it was really, you know, a little bit the bigger picture and nice that I think he could make some relationship between what we do and have in situate with what other towns and, and cities are doing in Massachusetts. I mean, 350 senior centers, councils on aging in Massachusetts. Um, so they all do something a little differently, but he oversees them all. And he does try and visit and be aware. So it was good. And then I'd been in some discussion. I was supposed to meet, or we were going to have Barbara Stieglitz from the food pantry come on June first. And then I, I did go in and, and meet with her, and she was just recovering from a little illness. So we put it off. But in the meantime, we had a chance to talk. And then another woman, who's a, a great volunteer for her now, or them, um, came and met with me. So we're really going to work on, yes, having them come on the program, maybe coming here and just talking a little bit more about the changes and improvements for the food pantry and making sure everybody knows what Good. they have and, and how they're trying Where to it is, what be they more have, accessible. What their hours are, what yep. they do. The fact that the sloop can stop there, yep. you know what I mean? It does. Yep. But, um, and then just in terms of partnering and just a little more outreach and them being able to sort of understand more about what we do and might be able to use from them when they have clients and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's great. We've always known and, and had it in the newsletter and it was open you know, just on Tuesdays, but they are doing uh, a lot. So just trying to increase communication about them through us and with us. They're servicing, I think, like 275 families. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. 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 So family specifically without even including some of the other senior individuals, or is that yeah. each household? Each, no, each household. household. Okay. Yeah. So that would be a senior as well. Would, yeah. Would, yeah. Oh, that's that's great. Uh, yeah, look good. It's a good operation. Um, pickleball finally figured out the summer hours, which will be up at the recreation gym 
um, three times a week, which is great. So one afternoon, as we have been doing four to six, but also two mornings, which we, I know the group that had originally been playing loved the mornings, and then they could, we couldn't have them because the recreation uh, department had gone into the Jenkins gym, and of course they had to do their, their summer stuff there. So now, with the addition of the other gym, we do um, have two mornings, which is great. That's the, the old Gates yes. gym? Do you know that if uh, Rec is also going to be having recreation, sessions? not having no. any pickleball this for the summer, so we are it. Um, and I have had a call anyway. I think we both have about outdoor pickleball. You know, and that's I mean that's pending, and who knows how long we have two sets of tennis courts in town that could be modified, but in fact can't be modified because um, the high school uses them, and Maya governs how they are used and or can't be modified. So the gates can't be modified at all. We could look maybe in the future towards the high school being modified, but I mean painted. Mm -hmm. But um, and that's costly, so it's not in either of our budgets at the moment. So again, that's time consuming just to try to get that to happen. But I guess there's some proposal too to redo the high school resources up there, the fields, and or maybe that would include the tennis courts, in which case they would become the school's courts and maybe by the time the senior center is built, maybe the Gates tennis courts will be more available. So, you know, we don't have outdoor pickleball at the moment unless we build courts. Um, but we have three gymnasiums, <laughs> all of which are painted for pickleball, so that's not bad. I think there's a move to put, right? I think the tennis courts are called, the, the, the all comes out to mm. the, There's a move to, 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 to uh, generate some funding to redo the courts. So. Or is that the basketball? The basketball. Oh, so that's right. Yeah, was, right. Basketball. Basketball. I think, ten, uh, I think tennis is there the with the basketball, basketball court yeah. they want to get back. Yeah. Is that the ones at the high school? Yeah. 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 Okay. And that's well, that's yeah. fine because they get used. They get used. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just raise like over $1,000. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, speaking, I, I had met with Recreation in May, Mara and Nick, just, just to talk about future use of the gym and or other possible resources there, another classroom, and just trying to know that we're on the same page in terms of what we hope to be able to do together, even while we wait for the Senior Center or in the future. So that was a fruitful meeting. Um, I had a meeting up at Town Hall, you know, safety risk management, and also we need to buckle down a little bit on release forms, waivers, when we are doing not just exercise classes, but all volunteers need to do that. Oh, and all volunteers need to, um, including the COA board members, I, I meant to have in the packet um, the ethics uh, summary, yeah. and again, a request for most everyone, I believe, because it's actually supposed to be done every year, to go through the ethics uh, test. So I will get that information to you by email instead. And that came from Kathy Curran of the town clerk. Um, I did, in fact, submit the application to the AAR World Health Organization and AARP for uh, becoming part of the age-friendly network. Terrific. It was not easy. But I, I certainly did get some feedback from Caitlin, which was helpful. and. Um, Maude, and forgive me if anyone else had responded, but I do that's, have copies awesome. of it if anybody would like them, and I, you're not going to read it now, so you can take that with you if you would like to see. It's Jim's letter. Um, that's the letter of interest that goes uh, with the application, and then the questions I answered, um, which I think was fine. So I don't know what the time frame is for hearing or being able to sort of launch that. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll mention here. I don't I, think it's like. Uh, I don't think it's terribly likely. I think I Caitlin mentioned you know, ma matter of weeks, not months, but we'll see. So we will see. That's great. Uh, I did get to apply. Mass Council on Aging, you know, sort of all of a sudden offered a few different opportunities for a little money, which I'll mention at a couple of different places. But one of them was to purchase at a much discounted um, cost, as it turns out, a quarter of the cost for a hearing. Uh, assistive hearing devices for here. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it in the past because we just didn't have a PA system. You know, I mean, it wasn't, don't even have a microphone, honestly. <laughs> well, that's go that will change because I guess we'll spring for the microphone. There's a little installation involved, but we are getting for $200 um, uh, a, a 
transmitter receiver kind of thing that can get connected to our speaker here and then the personal devices that people can either wear in their ears or around their neck and then also a conversational set so that if you were having a conversation with another person who was hard of hearing then you can improve that conversation because we do have a hard time with, with some they have to look right down yeah um, so I, no, think I'm not good at, I think we can do it help it's good so no and it's great and it was short money there was another one that was bigger money but at this point, I think this is going to be sufficient for what we have here, and then we'll move on beyond that. Just a question. Did you say that, that microphones were going to be purchased? No, I haven't had a microphone. I know. You know. If we did a presentation here, it's small enough so that we haven't really right. needed it. But there would be times, but I think I'll buy one. You will? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Just a question. Because since I have the AV guide come in to do the whatever piece is going to be required to connect. Uh -huh. Okay. I guess I'll probably get a microphone. Okay. Because sometimes we have suffered without it, but um, right. we've just made do. Well, I did it buy a portable one a couple of years ago, and I just ended up it was not a very quality thing. It never worked. All right. Yeah. So we trashed that. There's lots of devices that people are using these days for that. Well, and like, I did go to, we like have that. dependent that they can put out here and, hear, and listen to you talk across the table, or so there's, <coughs> there's. That could end up, I, yeah. I haven't seen yeah. what they look like, what we're yeah. getting. Good. But that's so good. anyway, that was that was great, and so I should know by mid to end of June, um, and then just have to buy them. But for two hundred dollars instead of literally, even when I told the AV guy what the price was quoted, he's like, "Wow, that doesn't sound right. That sounds like really a lot less." Well, and it is. So the Fifty Plus Job Seekers Networking Group is continuing. Um, it's been going well, and, and really kind of almost morphing into people are coming. She has 13 to 15 people coming. She had two meetings at the library because we didn't have wireless at the community building and they were going online to use LinkedIn and learn about that. Um, it's great. You know, I, I think people the need to keep on coming. They do. You know, they you, can come and go. You build camaraderie with the rest yeah. of the group and you can brainstorm ideas yeah. and companies and things like that. And, and the only way to do that is yeah. get to know the other people. Yeah. And the demographic is truly, you know, I would say it's about 53 or 4 to um, maybe 55 to easily late 60s. So it's it's doing what it should do. So she's proposed, this is Susan Kelly, who's been doing that for us through the tax work-off program, but does it through MCOA, and they receive, you know, other councils have received funding for her to come and do that. So now she wanted us to apply again for it through MCOA and continue to do it with her uh, as a host site. So either on our own or frankly maybe with Cohasset in Norwell. Marshfield's been doing it, so I don't know if they need us or they would like to partner, but I think it's worthwhile to continue. Because it's just one of those cohorts that gets lost in the shuffle. Not to compare, but remember um, it's never too late to date, right? Remember the age of love? And that's a cohort that shouldn't be, you know, dismissed or overlooked. It's just that there are older people who are single. It's a book club, you know, to saying that it's another one. I mean, we, you know, you just need to always try to meet the various needs, not just the typical need. So Seniors Connect, I will plan around two for that since that was Situate Education Foundation money and we did buy the six iPads. We want to go through and do that again, so um, to pull that together for September. But um, exciting news is that... Can I interrupt? So, yes. Because I had this conversation with some Interact kids yesterday, so mm -hmm. you're... They came for their last right. monthly tech time yesterday. Right. So they'll... Do you want to contact them for September? Or whoever can... If it's not a senior, mm -hmm. then... Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Um, I mean, they're planning on continuing to help. Good. Okay. So. In the regime. Uh, I did invite the three seniors from Interact to the volunteer luncheon, and so got Kara and Marie. Oh, okay. Um, so good news though, so Situate Education Foundation again, it was so nicely after the interview, <laughs> we didn't know about it then. Um, and we actually submitted two. I submitted a grant and Lisa was interested in um, purchasing these Nordic walking poles they're called that she'd seen at the MCOA conference. And so we put that through for a grant as well and 
they gave us that money. So we have 10 new Nordic walking poles. Mm -hmm. And she's been trained to sort of convey the, the use of them and the benefits of them. So she's doing that in July, I believe, uh, for people to come in and learn. And then they can use them and borrow them. But we're also starting a walking club officially, which we've done in the past. But I think this might sort of help boost it. Um, so I have my grant, and I gave you a handout attached to my report, but it's memory training. Rebooting your memory, I called it, but it's not. I mean, I just called it that for the grant. Um, so I got the money necessary to purchase the license for a year and get the training and the curriculum, which is um, next week out at UCLA in California. So it's called the Longevity Center. And I will admit, I, I learned of it. I may have mentioned this last meeting, but through Duxbury ultimately, but someone had called because they read about it in the ledger and they thought it was us, but actually it was Duxbury. But when she explained what it was and she was so excited, I said, well, I'd like to do that. Um, so then I found out more about it and that's what I end up, ended up writing for the grant is not only just my getting that training and being able to provide the four week uh, workshops here, but I will tell you Duxbury Senior Center just said they're on their third one and they took 20 people at a time for four weeks, and they still have a waiting list. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, that's pretty good. Yeah. And they did tie it in with something that then I, I sort of did a, something a little different to try to make it intergenerational. But following the workshops, we, tried, we put together a program with either the English classes at the high school or the middle school and try to do a sort of a storytelling piece where they would put preserve their memories in either um, written form or maybe do something visual. So I'm going to be talking to the schools and see what we can work out for a program for that. So kind of two parts. And that one doesn't really cost anything. That's just effort and, um, and planning. Are you able to train a trainer? I'm not sure about that. Um, so we'll find out. And also they're in talks with MCOA about bringing the training here, which mm -hmm. is early, so it wouldn't be for another year at least, mm -hmm. which might mean then we could get more people trained. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, there's a relicensing, so the $1,500 for that we don't have yet. So I think once we know how popular or successful it could be, then I could probably get a sponsor for that. That's yeah. what I think, as opposed to another grant. I think somebody might like to put their name on that with us. Okay. That's what I'm hoping anyway. Good. Um, so we have a volunteer luncheon on Tuesday. Does anybody want to tell me if they're coming now? Because we have to get the number down tomorrow. Okay. Did you already call? Uh, yeah, I think I did. Okay, I'm I sorry, called, I don't know. I told the two. Okay. I already told them. So everybody... I'll come away and then. So, I know you... Uh, that's good. I just wasn't sure because we should have called. Um, and then a few other uh, things that we are planning. The art and craft sale we did last year as more of a, sort of a bigger show and then it did become a bit of a sale, so exhibit and sale, and we tried to get sort of bigger crafters. And we did it for a day and a half. So, you know, we're going to tone it down a little bit, just go back to Joanne Papandrea featuring her artists that take the classes with her, and, and they're all very good, um, both exhibiting and, and selling their work, whether they make cards or do prints or um, sell originals, um, a few other artists that are connected to us, and then um, Foss is invited to have some crafted items and the knitters. So um, on that side of it, it's a little bit more of a... Just a question. It says Saturday the 25th. Of which August. month? Okay. Oh, oh. Did I not say? Oh, no. Okay. Oh. I was editing. Mm -hmm. August. August. August 25th. Thank you. Um, and then I know we discussed at our last meeting, so this is really just still possible or, or pending, whether we're sharing space at Jack Conway with the, with the friends. We talked about making more postcards, maybe being able to put together a, a brochure of some sort or any other information that would be useful. Um, but the other MCOA money, and it's very little money, but it's just a, it's just a reason, I suppose, a good tie-in. They wanted to promote, um, it's Go For Life, which we promote through Aging Mastery as well. So it's uh, kind of an offshoot of the National Council on Aging Go For Life, but it, it has to do with all four kinds of exercise in incorporating them into your lifestyle. So walking, of course, and cardio being one of them. But anyway, they wanted um, COAs to promote in September, everybody do a family fun walk. So it works for us because we were trying to figure out a nice event to maybe yep. um, 
make a little bit more intergenerational to connect with the age friendly yep. initiative and maybe even launch yep. it. So yep. Yep. I still have to fill out the permit and finding a date. I thought a Sunday is a, a good day and we need to figure out a route, how short or long um, to make it, but currently it's either September 23rd or 30th because the 16th is not possible. And the 7th is a little soon, so anyway, we'll see. <coughs> If anyone has ideas, I think this has to probably go into the committee for a little bit of help planning the subcommittee. Um, but still, I'm excited about that. And then also the Navy Band, um, we talked about the larger scale military band concert that maybe we could uh, partner with the school music program on. So Greg Lasardis, as he says, he's not in charge, <laughs> but he loves the idea. And he will help to push it through and, and move it into the other areas where it needs to go. So we're sort of in charge at this point of connecting with the Navy Band. He's and middle school. He's middle school. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Mr. Richter is in charge of the yeah. Center for Performing Arts, and there's a new department head for the music department, I guess. So he's going to oh. go to them. We're going to the Naval Band Outreach um, because they couldn't come the end of June when I had asked them to, so then we seem to have... At least we're put, being put um, at the top of the list for anything else I'd ask for. So I told him about that idea, and he likes that idea, that we'd be doing it with the schools and the veterans. And you know, if they wanted to bring the big one, it's the Pops, uh, Pops Ensemble, they call it, um, Wind and Brass. So we're looking at, and unfortunately, ideally, Mr. Lassar would like early November-ish, so that would end up being around Veterans Day if we can get the right dates. I think we'd look at either a Friday night or a Sunday. Now he was discouraging Sunday night unless it was Veterans Day because that's a long weekend. Then it would work, but his concern was that students on Sunday night don't come out for things because they're too anxious about the work they need to get done. For Monday morning. Um, so that was his input. So anyway, that is that. <clears throat> so a lot. That cannot be a, a full cost of fundraiser. Right. Exactly. It cannot. But it could be good community awareness and maybe, not, I don't know, what else we can incorporate. Yeah. I just want to mm -hmm. ask, what were the thoughts you were putting on the lobster luncheon? Was that still something that's kind of in the work? Right. Uh, right now, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't get that entertainment either, so maybe a lunch. Uh -huh. And I thought we were doing the 14th, but been doing the newsletter, so that has to go out tomorrow. So mm -hmm. actually I could check before you leave if you want and see if we targeted that or not. Um, the other thing I, I thought I meant to mention, and you know what, I skipped right over it, is the proposed GAFTRA fair increases. So I do have handouts about that. I didn't put them in your packet. But they, you know, it was suggested, I'm on the advisory board and there's 28 communities which are on the advisory board and um, just because of the cost of, of the services and their lack of increase in funding and rise in operational costs, you know, what to do. So the board had actually suggested they probably had to consider rate increases. Of course, when I got the list, it's like, oh, that, for us, that's kind of a lot. So for the fixed route, which is our sloop, um, they propose raising the fare is a dollar right now, so they would raise it to $1.50. But seniors and students are only 50 cents, so that fare would only go up to 75 cents a ride. So that's not bad. The dial a ride, which is what we provide, which is the, the call for scheduling a ride service, um, currently that's $1.25. And, you know, that went up for us because we didn't charge $1.25 until sort of Gatcha said, you know, we want everyone to be consistent. So we really recently, probably a year, maybe a year and a half ago, had to raise it to $1.25 from $1. Um, so now they're proposing to raise it to $2 a ride for us, which would be a $4 round trip. Um, and we do give out these 10 ride passes, so that was the way the ride went back to costing a dollar if they bought a 10 ride pass, $10. Um, then they, they were just riding for, for a dollar a ride for, uh, with us. So, but if it goes up, then it's $15 for the 10 ride pass. So it is sort of significant for us, so there was some discussion, it sort of felt significant for others. 
So this discussion, we certainly we have donations that we receive, and we could earmark some of them, and we could use them to subsidize right. or sort of give scholarships out to maybe right. qualified seniors on fixed income that really would have a hard time with that and need to use the service. So, you know, it's really probably necessary, and the funny thing is they might even still get or might even still need to cut some services because it really doesn't make up the shortfall for them if they don't get enough funding from the state and the federal government, which they're waiting on. So it's a little bit of a quandary there, but if you're interested, there is, uh, well, there's- Are these <clears throat> definite? Not. Are they proposed? No, they're proposed. Okay. So there's some public hearings. The closest to us is in Plymouth, unfortunately, which is June 27th. So I will go to that one. And as you know, advisory board members, we're just supposed to hear. We'll get the data once they collect all of the comments made at these public hearings. Um, we'll receive it. We'll get to review it. And then ultimately, we vote. So the 28 representatives from the communities vote on whether this should go through, and if it does, then it would be probably in September, he's estimating. Are those across the board for other communities, or are those specific numbers that you quoted just for Sichuan? No, 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 across the board. Okay. I mean, they might vary depending on what it was, which is funny because, of course, well, for dial a ride, the cash fare is $1.25, companions are $1.25 right now, if, if someone had to go with that person. Okay. Um, right, it's an accompanying. Someone on a ride. Um, sure. And then the 10 ride pass. So that is consistent across the board. The public services, those vary. So those are different. And there's a list and there's a handout. Um, I just didn't put it right in the packet, but there's a handout for everybody. And we do have gas for coming July 9. No, Joanne LaFerrer, who is the customer service, customer relations um, point guard representative. So she's going to come and talk a little bit about transportation options and you know, what GATRA is, because people always ask and want to know, and it's nice to sort of hear it from the horse's mouth, and she's good. Um, and then she can even do uh, the discount IDs or, or Charlie card processing right here. So sometimes that's nice for people for the summer. They're looking at, you know, how am I going to take the, the tea or whatever into Boston. So, um, so she's going to do that on July 9th, and maybe that would be another opportunity, though. <clears throat> it's really past the time for the public hearings. So, sorry about that. Um, so transportation, you know, we, we are out of a coordinator. Jill is filling in as she has. I am doing what is necessary, and we have a volunteer who's willing. She's been on the tax workoff program, and she's willing to um, give us some time for that as well until we hire. Do you anticipate a time? Do you have an anticipated timeline on the hire? Well, we don't, except that we have uh, two or three applications Why at the moment. Why not next fiscal year, which we do September and July? Well, it, by the time, if yeah, we, if we aren't even interviewing yet, because yeah, um, I was going to wait until it closed, yeah. um, which must be next week, I guess. And then we'll see what we have. The next. application time. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so, yes, chances are. Um, but, you know, the number for May, 705 rides, that's actually a little bit more than, uh, I don't think we've broken 700 um, in the last year. <coughs> a lot of out of town medical. A lot of medical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, 185 versus 137 yeah. for April. So that is a significant increase. Yeah, 25 to 30% yeah, increase in a month. I mean, I, it's easy to see from this list that is our great that is people's greatest need, and truthfully, people use that that may may drive locally but don't want to drive to their town. appointments or can't because you know they can't they're told they can't or they yeah shouldn't. so um, and we just did a couple of trips in May. I know they tried to plan a couple of others that didn't go because there weren't enough people, but they did a couple of market trips. Um, what were the shopping specials? <laughs> you know, I'm sure I have asked that question myself. <laughs> oh, shopping special is the the planned trips to Shaw's or Hanover Mall. Uh -huh. So in other words, that's either every week or every other week. So that's a special trip as mm -hmm. opposed to somebody just saying, can you drive me to mm -hmm. so-and-so. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have listed in the newsletter, these are the days and times we actually do those trips. <laughs> Now they, I don't know, maybe we might have put the trip to um, Market Basket in there too. I think it is, yeah. Which is maybe why it's a little bit big. Oh no, it's not as big as April. We might have. 
So they went to Plymouth for Market Basket, which is a beautiful store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Great yeah. Great London donuts. I think they are so puffy. Yeah. And you play them at London. Well, London, my favorite. And the door after 5 o'clock is gone. I went recently. They had a great special in scallops. It was they were really yeah, yeah, it's a nice store. Okay, so uh, Jenny's report you can see next for outreach. Again, you know the the deal here. Her service interactions in the different categories. So fuel assistance. You know, still in May she was doing that. Mm -hmm. these numbers, you know what, I, I forgot that I meant to ask her to include Norm's numbers. I did want to include those in the book because we don't have that. Mm -hmm. the the board. Board. It's easy. Yeah. I mean, we could, it's easy to check. Okay. Yeah. I would like that. Um, but the number of seniors served. So in a month's time, 25 seniors were assisted through, through outreach for any number of those um, categories. Uh, and numbers for activities or events, 440, well, sorry, sorry 870 sign-ins. So I know I have mentioned, um, you know, close to the 1,000 person or 1,100 person mark that we might, you know, see duplicate times. In other words, you might do three different exercise classes or come for a cafe talk or um, play the ball, um, but also do other things. And that gets us up to those numbers. But 280 people having done one thing or another um, in May is, is pretty good, 280 a month. And again, we know we're not getting some. We keep trying, but we just miss them. We get to talking, and then we forget to <laughs> jump on them to sign in. But still, you do notice between recreation and exercise and fitness, those are our biggest numbers. Sure. Now, recreation also does include, um, in addition to things you would expect, pickleball, for instance, and badminton. Um, I forget. Is that badminton group that plays after pickleball? Is that a, is that considered the COA? Uh, Three for years. Yeah. Okay. But it, they do, you know, they take care of it. Gautam yeah. now takes care of it. Tom Edwards used to, and yeah. then Gautam Merchant, who I think right. probably met at Pickleball. So, yeah. you know. But it has gone back up again, hasn't yeah. it? It went down for a while to maybe only eight. <coughs> but now it's up to, what, 15? Yeah, I think they have a lot of new players. Hmm. Which is good. So they can't really play in the summer, though, because well, we don't have gym space for them where the nets are. Hmm. So, um, Anyway, the end, the end of June. So, for example, the, the, the new walking program, mm -hmm. that'll fill in someplace in here, exercise fitness? or That will be, yes. Mm -hmm. Or it could be recreation. recreation. I guess we have to decide it's always yeah, a, a quandary where to, right. where to where put it. it. Um, cool. But the trail walking group, I'm going to say, must be under recreation. And that's been a pretty steady group of five or six. Um, Gina Fairbanks is the volunteer who sort of spearheads it, but you know, this group, and, and they always go to a different um, trail. conservation trail or something that you really maybe don't even know exists, but is a great walk. Um, so this will be in addition, the walking club, you know, the poles, but they've right. taken the poles on the trail walks now to try them out. And Jill tried them out, right? I did. Did yeah. you like them? But, but I think it's hard to get used to. I have I need to try them again. And they are adjustable, correct? Because yeah. they're tall yeah. and you know, not. <laughs> okay, well. They get, your, they get your upper body. Well, you I You've got to have your upper like, body. Yeah, and, that, and that it's with more your of a workout. Feet, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's more of a. Is it one each or two? Two. Two. Each person gets two. Two balls. Yeah. I mean, they're a lot like a ski, ski yeah. ball, yeah. cross country yeah. yeah. ski ball, which you could use, but these have special attributes of them that do help with the workout and um, help make it comfortable and help make it effective. It's good for balance, too. Good for balance, too. Also good for warding off dogs. <laughs> Not mosquitoes, though. Right. No, it's good. No, that's a, that's a workout. 
Oh, I did mean to mention too, just because I had met with the planning department when I was sort of going through the process for the logo. So this is something that was developed. This, these are wayfaring or wayfinding signs for situate, C situate, S-E-A situate. So there are a couple up already, but it was developed through the Economic Development Commission and the planning department and our previous TA, I guess. I just hadn't been aware of it. So once I was talking about the logo, they're like, well, we're not sure if you can use it or this has to be. Basically what this is is to identify any of the municipal or town-based uh, departments or buildings mm -hmm. so people know that they are related. So there's one if you go into <coughs> the driveway off First Parish for Town Hall, it's actually for the middle school. So there's one there that says the Gates Intermediate School and middle school. Um, they just haven't put a lot up. So I think we'll get one. We are listed in here as having one of these. So it's, you know, it's pretty and it's so simple. So should, this should be oh, I know here, it's, this should be at the community building, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay. So Situate Senior Center, there we are, there's our sign. Um, which is fine, you know, I had envisioned someday having a wood carved sign with our actual logo and maybe we still can, but this is consistent identification throughout town of, of what people might need to recognize. So it is nice, but yeah. it didn't hinder what we were trying to do with the logo. You don't notice, people notice yeah. that. It, it, I think this identified in various places in town that have that sign. But it's cute, see, Situate is, is nice, I like it. Okay, I think I am all set. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Linda? On any of that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, nice results. We've got the World Health Organization AARP application. We've got some grant. You've got some grants approved. I'm yeah, yeah. crazy busy, and I still have to finish writing a couple. Grant applications? Well, the one for the job networking group to come here is due next week. Okay. And, um, then that momentum one for the age friendly that Caitlin was recommending we look at for some money right? for a launch. Which I, you know, something. Okay. It's in November, months. isn't it? Oh, but I don't know. Maybe it needs to be in soon for a for November decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We don't have a BOS. Tonight, so we'll move on to Joan. Oh. South Shore Elder Services. South Shore Elder Services was, meeting was held on Tuesday, June 5th. Uh, the director of the Boston Home Care and Boston Home Care Home Health Day, Tina Barton, were special guests at the meeting. Sandra presented Tina with a plaque and flowers. Tina is a home health aide. She's been for 10 years, and she saved a man in the shower. And she was giving him a shower, and he passed out and stopped breathing. She called 911 and did CPR, and uh, he's doing awesome. all right. Wow. Awesome. So that's why they presented that. Um, she thanked the board and said she loved working uh, for South Shore LD Services. And they always have a detailed report, finances, and audit. The audit is being done this month. The union contract was settled in two meetings, which is yeah. exceptional. Yes. <laughs> the contract is for three years with a 4% increase in salaries. Mass Home Care has a new executive home care and a new vice president. And Sandra is the chairperson for the workforce committee. Sandra. She's, a, she's the head of the COA. Is that Lindsay? Lindsay? Lindsay. 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 Okay. Thank you. And the, 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 the director of the protective uh, services left, so they're looking for, um, for a new one. And sure. then the, uh, the attorney to training for the senior managers was very successful because it was really needed because there are many changes still, still going on. And there's a home care database online, and there was a bill approved, I think it was by the state, that all home care people have to be listed with addresses. And these home health people are very upset over it because they don't want people to know where they live. These you know, are the these employees? Are the, huh? The employees? employees yeah, are patients. Employees. No, the employees. These employees. Really? I can see that. That, that, that. I can see that. Yeah, they may not. Be legal. Well, well, 
but well, they may yeah, not want, I, they I may was, be discriminated by their neighborhood too. Yeah, but when I went to right. hospice, yeah. you weren't allowed to give out your address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these people are single mothers with mm -hmm. kids. Right. So right. Right. They're worried about somebody trying to contact them or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's a sticky issue there. And then an interesting thing, um, which was in the news, uh, tells that Medicare is on top of things, but um, the South Bay Mental Health Center, which operates Weymouth Mental Health Clinic, has agreed to pay $4 million mm. based on allegations that, that to build the state mass health program for services provided to patients by unlicensed, unqualified, unsupervised staff members at 17 clinics across the state, according to the Attorney General. It has nothing to do with South Shelby services, right. but it does show that people are still trying, to beat, on. Still trying to beat the system. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. The South Shelby Mental Health, is that what you said it was? Yeah. This? Thank you. South Bay Mental Health, okay. Um, volunteer luncheon is on June 20th at Land Tennis. That's for people that with meals on wheels, with drivers and whatnot. Uh, the picnic is on the 23rd at Nantasket Beach from 11 to 2. And the theme is going to be red, white, and blue. And annual meeting is in November. Um, and they have several ads, and this is a new ad they have in some of the magazines, and it's for veterans advertising South Shore Elderly Services. Protect and serve veterans in their homes with compassion and care. And these pictures were taken by, by one of the uh, staff members. Mm -hmm. cool. And that's their annual report, South Shore Elderly Services? Yeah, I'll pass it around. They, this, this comes out every, there's a couple of them that comes out. There's one in Rhode Island. They practically have a lot of the same articles, and that's the latest ad that the South Shore is doing. And then the, the June community dinner at St. Luke's is going to be meatloaf, hash brown, potato casserole, vegetables, and strawberry shortcake. What date is that again? June? The June 24th. June 24th. Oh, the okay. Fourth Sunday. Okay. Community dinner is the 24th. Very good. We can give you, you can give like 50 people or more now. Oh. I know that it's lighter, you know, and lighter weather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thank you, Joan. Friends of Sidgwick Seniors in Wayne, you're. Yeah, right now we are out. really focusing on tomorrow, which is our golf tournament. Mm -hmm. um, and we're really hoping that the weather report that was published Monday and Tuesday <laughs> is correct. <laughs> It's and not the one that was published today. It's going to be well, hot, hot. No, no, no neither one of them was hot. No, it's not hot. It was like 67 what? to 56. The temperature stayed the same, but it was partly cloudy, sunny, Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, it was rain. Right. Or showers. But it's okay. Yeah, it's missed. You're going to be out in the court. You don't care. Right? <laughs> Uh, so it just, I mean, everybody's already paid, it's, you know, it's, it's a done deal, you just Love like it to be today. nice weather-wise. We have 76 golfers, we have, and, and I'm sorry, I don't have the number of hole sponsors, 50, but we have 50, 50 hole sponsors, which is more than we had last year. Five, five more. Five more, than, thank you, than we had last year. Um, we have 30 raffle items and seven silent auction items, so we're hoping that it will be a very successful um, start to our fundraising for the new senior center, which awesome. is going to be at the old base. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Very good. Anything else? Any any questions? Or, no, that's we, we haven't done anything except the golf tournament yeah. for the past month. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. It, it's, it's a lot of work. But. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions on Joan, Linda, Elaine? Do we have any old or new business to bring up? No, Commu no. Community or committee report outs. I'm not sure if we have any committee report outs. Um, well, advisory met th three weeks ago or a month ago, and we basically discussed application, mm -hmm. 
and how to tie okay. some events together with Right. How, how to coordinate yeah, yes. a little bit better, or it, if at all, events, dates, mm -hmm. and among other things we talked about, probably was the quota. Mm -hmm. So that's that's that was probably our our report out on that. Um, along with what Elaine just mentioned about fundraising, um, I met a week ago with uh, Les Ball, Pam, and Sandy, and Sandy about trying to put together the bones of a capital campaign mm -hmm. uh, to raise significant money for the senior center. Um, kind of formulated after what the library did a little bit, um, but probably not as big a scale. Um, but it, it might be eventually, we're not sure. But um, you know, we feel that for lots of reasons, um, Community, whether the community is, whether it be FOSH, FOSH, NCOA, or other people who maybe are unaffiliated with either of those two organizations, um, there needs to be a, a, a very open and uh, serious effort <clears throat> to show to the community that, um, that we can um, contribute you know, to the, the cost of the senior center. Mm -hmm. We mean you know, all of us. Um, so we're kind of putting that together a little bit now. We've got a couple other people that we need to talk to. Um, I think amongst the four of us, you know, we feel that there are some opportunities for significant donations in, in, in situ. I mean, significant donations. Um, but unless you ask, mm -hmm. you're not going to get them. Mm -hmm. And so we have to develop a plan to how we're going to ask, who we're going to ask, and, and how we're going to go about this. With and we're not, we're not committing to a number. Uh, I think that would be unwise to do that. Um, I think maybe as we go along and we get a better feel for what we think the potential is, then I think maybe we would you know, target a number. But um, I think at this point in time, it's in the preliminary stages. The four of us all feel that because we don't have something to sell, it's going to be a hard show right now. Until there's something. Uh, until there's something that, that we can get from the architect, uh, at least a very preliminary sketch, drawing, ideas. How can you go to somebody and ask them for a $50,000 contribution to, to um, have a room named after them if you can't even show them anything? So, um, I'm hoping that Linda and JD and their, and their efforts on the Public Building Commission and the interaction with the architect will be able to move them along. I'm not, I don't think we do, we don't need a final plan. We need something. Uh, and, um, you know, other than that, I think our, we're kind of grounded in our, our, our efforts to, to, to raise significant money will be the first thing I would ask when they came to me and asked me for yeah. donations, well, what, right. what am I donating to? Yeah, right. So, Show so me well, what's going we on. have this building, yeah. we think we may be able to start building it in a year, a year and a half, and, uh, you know, but I can't tell you what it's, what it's, where it's <laughs> going to be, what it's going to look like, uh, and everything else. So, you know, we're, we're kind of, so I think, I think we have some time to plan this and plan it out well between now and probably late fall before we really kind of kick it off. And, so, just to let everybody know that, you know, that that effort is, is starting. Uh, Good to be thinking about it. Yeah. I think, you're, I think you, you just said something that I think is pretty appropriate. <coughs> if the community sees that the community is participating here, that'll be a big help. Yeah. yeah. You, don't set numbers. Don't yeah. set... But... Yeah. yeah. But there's, there's, a, there's a groundswell of yeah. support. Yeah. 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 Good question. In my discussion with lots of people, uh, I mean, they, they just, they're waiting, they're waiting to see what we're going to come up with and they're, they're going to be willing to, to help out. Is there the possibility that, that, that the plan, although it will be preliminary, that from the architects will be available by the fall? I would say the busiest time, well they say, the gathering input initially yeah. right, right. from all of the stakeholders, from the public, you know, there'll be plenty of meetings and opportunity to hear and speak about design options or not, needs. Not sure about that answer. Really. 
Yeah, I mean, I what I was, what I was concerned with having a, 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 meet, a town meeting in the fall and then a ballot before we lose momentum. Oh, no. No. There will be a vote in the fall. No. The architects, will, will, we would like to try to get them involved in some public open forums to get feedback, to get ideas, to then put down on a piece of paper and a blueprint. And that, even if that happened in July and August, so there won't be anything ready for the fall. No. no. It will hopefully be ready for April town meeting. Right. Uh, and you weren't at previous meetings, but right. no, it I was wasn't. somewhat discussed that it was an aggressive timeline, but this is the goal, was to bring it to next town meeting. Even though it would have been nice to bring it to a special town meeting, they won't. Well, won't be ready. Okay. So. And we would have liked to. Yeah. yeah. It's a little disappointing. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. momentum that yeah. you, you know, the momentum. People at the landfill that we we're collecting, they're all positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Given that. How much do we make for that? $2,000 in two days. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, $2,000. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And it was interestingly, I think, you know, I didn't keep numbers, but I would say the, the, a higher percentage of older people. Passed us by without donating. Okay, the younger. Okay. 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 Well, the younger people. And they were dropping $20 just to donate. Yeah. 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 Anybody else have any other items of business? I don't have anything else. We sort of covered subcommittee events and advisory. Not necessarily, unless, well, I guess we should just indicate that we need a secretary. <laughs> so if anybody wants to think about whether they'd be willing to do that, Think about that. Think about it. Ah, go ahead. Do we have a motion to adjourn?